Well, bless the Lord, everybody. It's another day in the Lord's presence. Anybody glad to be alive? Hallelujah. Well, this first message this morning is that God has never failed. Has anybody, is there anybody a witness to that today? God won't ever fail you. Come on, stand to your feet and just clap your hands. Here we go. Here we go, choir. Y'all ready? Let's share it together. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God.
though the Lord has never failed you yet, that means you have no reason to fear that he'll ever fail you. Look at your week and say, he didn't fail me last week. He won't fail me this week. There's nothing I could do that will make my God a failure. So I'm encouraged today. Hallelujah. I said I'm encouraged today because my God won't fail. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody just slip your hand up in there and say, my God is not a failure. Huh? I don't care what you're faced with. God cannot fail. Thank you, Jesus. And so, God, we just give you praise in this moment. Because he has a 100% victory rate. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just give him honor today. Come on, somebody clap your hands if you know that God is who he said he will be. Hallelujah. Can we just take this moment right here and just lift our hands? Come on, say, I live high. Let's do it in this sanctuary. I lift my hands. You know your reason. Come on, you know your testimony. Just lift your hands right there. Say, I live my hands. My hands in prayer. That's what we've come to do. Say, I Jesus. My hands in praise. Oh, I'm in mind. Yes, Lord. For every way you've made and every door you've opened. 
that's got that testimony. Somebody said, you're my Savior. You're my Savior. Yes, you are, Jesus, my Deliverer. Say, you are my God. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And I'll give you glory just for that. Oh, my Keeper. Yes, God. See you Say, you're Jehovah, yes Lord, you are my God. Come on, somebody worship him for him being our God. Glory to Jesus. Come on, don't stop praying and put your hands together. If you know God has been your keeper, if you know God has been your sustainer, if you know God has been your way maker, why don't you lift your hands to a great God that deserves a great praise? You don't have the right to remain silent. Our praise should be visible. Our praise should be vocal. Come on and lift your hands and give it praise. God, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. Not just for what you've done, but for who you are. Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to assemble in this place we call sanctuary. Thank you for being God in our lives. Thank you for being God over our lives. Thank you for being God through our lives. God, we don't have a right to be quiet today because the Bible says that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. And God, because we are breathing this morning, we lift our hands and we say thank you. Thank you for making ways out of no way. Thank you for keeping us from danger seen and unseen. Thank you for being a prayer hearing and answering God. Father, we thank you for the things that you've done for us that, that, that we've tried to take credit for. But God, we thank you for doing all that you've done in our lives. I pray for the person that is in this place today. They mustered up enough strength to come in this house, God. They're looking for you to do the miraculous. They're looking for you to do the magnificent. They're looking for you to do something amazing in their life. My prayer is that you would meet them at the brink of every need. God, we thank you for what you've done in our lives. We thank you for the life of our pastor, Bishop Oliver. God, we pray that you would continue to bless him and his family. Bless these, your people in this house. Bless those that are streaming now online and waiting to hear a word from you. Speak to us as only you can. Have your way in us and through us. Let us leave differently than the way that we came in. Bless as only you can. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all the people of God, lift your hands and say amen. 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 Welcome to Elizabeth Baptist Church. Give us a follow on all social platforms at EBC in your city. Ladies, we are one week away from our April WOW encounter. If you have not registered, I want to encourage you to do so. Registration for breakfast closes this Monday, April 22nd at midnight. So you want to make sure that you register. And this month is going to be very special. My mom is going to join me and we're going to share with you how prayer helped us through the diagnosis of her cancer through the journey and now in her recovery. So I encourage you join us. Every wow encounter is something spectacular. If you've never been, I encourage you to join us. We have a fantastic time. We'll be here April 27th, 8 o'clock if you desire to have breakfast, and 9 o'clock we'll start our WOW Encounter. I'm looking forward to seeing you here at the Atlantic Campus or online. Join us for a celebration that we call Legacy Sunday, happening at all sites and services Sunday, May 5th. We're honoring the incredible heritage and wisdom of our seasoned citizens ages 55 and up, and we want you to be a part of that. Their contributions have shaped our church family in profound ways, and we can't wait to celebrate them as they lead our worship experiences. With that in mind, calling all EBC seniors ages 55 and up, join our Legacy Choir and be a part of this unforgettable day. Your voices and presence will make the celebration even more meaningful. You can sign up for the Legacy Choir by going to our website. Then on Friday, May 17th, 
we will complete our legacy celebration with a senior citizens barbecue and sneaker ball. Come on, come for a time of fellowship, food, and fun. Dress to impress and be ready to shine in your kicks. Meet us on Friday, May 17th, 2024 at EBC Atlanta in the Fellowship Hall. Be sure to go to our website to pre-register for this event because seats are limited and you don't want to miss out. Now get ready for an unforgettable adventure this summer at Vacation Bible School. VBS will be held Monday, June 3rd through Thursday, June 6th at the Atlanta campus. Kids aged 4 through 11 will embark on a journey where they'll discover that God's truth never changes, everyone needs Jesus, and how to speak the truth in love. Each day will be filled with exciting activities, including exploring pools, spotting orcas, flying kites, and witnessing the mighty waves crash against the innovative Breaker Rock. And that's not all. On the last day, get ready for some waterworks. Now, there's a special offer. Encourage your child to bring a friend and get a free VBS t-shirt. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity for your child to grow spiritually while having fun at Vacation Bible School. One time for the birthday boy, our visionary and beloved senior pastor, Bishop Craig L. Oliver Sr. Whoop, whoop. All right, all right. I like to celebrate birthdays. I think you guys know that by now and can't wait to celebrate with you, Dr. Oliver, for his leadership and for the ministry gift that he is to the EBC family. And we want you to be sure that you posture yourself and that we all posture ourselves to show our appreciation in a tangible way. So we'll acknowledge the birthday on April 28th, but we will also celebrate at church on Sunday, May 5th. So make sure you're in the building. Praise the Lord, EBC. If you love the Lord, would you show some sign, whether it's the clapping of your hands or lifting of your hands? Come on, let's rest on our feet. We're going to continue in worship. We're going to demonstrate how much we love the Lord. Amen? Come on, let's put our hands together. Oh. Clap now, clap. If you love them, if you love them, let me hear you. Hey, come on and sing, say, sing. If you love, if you love them. Oh, 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 oh. Mm, come on and dance now. Dance. If you love them, if you love them, let me see you move your feet right here. Cause all the glory, all the glory it all belongs. It all belongs to you. Come on, let's do that again. If you love them, if you love them, let me hear you clap your hands right here. Come on and sing, say, sing. If you love, if you love them, oh, 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 yeah. Come on and dance now. Dance. If you love them, if you love them, move your feet like this right here. Yeah, cause all the glory, all the glory it all belongs. It all belongs to you. Yeah, it all belongs. It all belongs to you. Sing, sing, if you love, if you love whoa, 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 yeah, come on and dance now, dance. if you love them, if you love them, move your feet right here like this, cause all the glory, all the glory it, all belongs. it all belongs to you, yeah, it all belongs. You're the king of the 
nations, God of creation, He's Lord of everything, and everything He is, He is King of, King of the nations, He's God of creation, God of creation. He's Lord
just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. You see, this is the day that the Lord has made it. You and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's give God praise and let's give God glory even on this day and how we bless his name. God has graced us with the joy and the privilege of seeing a day that you and I have never seen before and a day in which you and I should never see again. And for that reason, we give God praise and we give God glory. And I say good morning to each and every one of you that joins us here on campus and to the many of you as well that joins us even in the virtual community and virtual space. And we thank God for your presence on today. And I pray and trust upon your arrival into the auditorium and even upon your logging on today in the virtual community that you had an opportunity to meet and greet those who are sharing in worship with you on today. And if not, go ahead and take a brief moment even and meet and greet those in close proximity. Share with those even in the chat, even right now. Say good morning. Give them a warm Christian embrace as we celebrate and we give God praise even on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, before you take your seats, again, let's give God praise in this place. Let's give God praise even in this place. God bless you. And you may claim your seats even in the presence of God. And we're so excited that God would allow us to convene again in worship on today. And how we thank God for the joy that is ours to gather in this sacred space and place for worship. And, of course, we have just viewed and have heard our video announcements. And we pray and trust that you would, of course, govern yourselves accordingly as we are hosting various activities and events here at EBC, and we certainly would encourage you to get plugged in and be a part of those different events that will be taking place. And as well, brothers and sisters, we're excited to have with us the 130th degree Fahrenheit of Atlanta alumni chapter of the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated that is sharing with us today on their second uh, Delta Versary. Let's give God praise for them. Uh, come on, you can do better than that. How honored we are to have you all today with us in worship. And we recognize that you could have gone to any other church, any other community of faith to share with them in worship, but we are elated and excited that you would uh, decide to come and share with us here at EBC. And again, we give God praise for each and every one of you. Give them another wonderful hand. And also among them uh, is one of our, uh, one of their members, of course, is Sister Shea um, Collins, who serves as the uh, District 6 school uh, board member for the Atlanta Board of Education, and we're excited to have you. God bless you. God bless you. Also today, brothers and sisters, we're so excited to have one of our esteemed uh, U.S. House uh, Representative, Congresswoman Lucy Beth, with us, as uh, she, of course, is currently serving Georgia's 7th District. Come on, let's give God praise for her. As, of course, she entered into Congress uh, since uh, 2019 after of course that historical win and we're excited to have her with us on today had the opportunity of meeting her briefly there in DC just a few months ago and she mentioned that she was coming to church and she's in church today and we're so excited to have her let's warmly welcome her as she'll come forward even right now to share with us come on EBC let's do better than that Congresswoman Lucy Macbeth let's celebrate God for her and how excited we are to have her in worship with us on today as she's providing incredible leadership uh, to our state. And we're excited to have you. God bless you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Saints. Good morning, Elizabeth Baptist Church. I'm so honored to, re a to be able to really worship with you and to worship in spirit and in truth and in song. I weep when I'm in church. I weep. So forgive me for weeping, but we need to weep for times such as this. But I do currently represent Georgia's 7th Congressional District, and I don't know how many of you know that your district lines are changing, and this is now going to be the new 6th District. And so 
I want to really just impart upon you how important your voice is, how important your faith is, and how important it is now more than ever to exercise your faith, to exercise your faith in God, to stand on what you know to be the truth, because the truth is truly what sets us free from everything that our communities and this nation and globally the world is under assault from. And so I don't need to talk to you about all the ills and everything that's happening because we truly as saints must always be aware of our surroundings. But I ask you to really delve into your faith at this time. Stand on your faith and stand on the word. Be engaged, be stake holders in your communities, be stakeholders in what you want and expect for your future generations. Now is the time to do so. I do want to just explain very briefly, as your wonderful shepherd has asked me to do, I usually don't speak in church, I just come to worship with you, but we need to explain to you what is happening politically with the district lines so that you're not taken by surprise so that you're fully made aware as you know there's been a lot of redistricting political redistricting in the state of Georgia things are changing in Georgia we're moving to periwinkle purple and so I will tell you within the time that I have been in Congress I am now running for my third district in six years just trying to remain in Congress because I have refused to let anyone other than the people determine when my time and my work in Congress is done and no one else. But you must understand what's happening. You are now sitting in what is going to be, during the November election, during this primary in May, the new 6th district. You are now the new 6th district. That encompasses all of Buckhead, it encompasses Smyrna, Vinings, Mapleton, Douglasville, South Fulton, a little bit of Brookhaven, a little bit of Sandy Springs. So know what it is you need to know when you go to exercise your right to vote. I can't tell you who to vote for and we will not tell you who to vote for, but be empowered with the knowledge that you know what district you are going to be in. Be prepared, do your research on the individuals that you want to make sure represent you. Take your power back. Stand on the word and be blessed. And EBC, let's take a brief moment even now and let's lift her in prayer. Scripture declares that we are to pray for those who are in positions of influence and authority. Let's pray. Father, how we honor you and how we thank you and how we praise you for the blessed privilege that is ours to come before your throne of grace and to make our requests and petitions known unto you. We pray even now, Father, for our dear sister as you have anointed her and appointed her and assigned her for such a time as we're living in today. The different political challenges and the different ways we're in, people are seeking to change and rewrite history and even seeking to marginalize and to even censor our voices and even take away our votes. Father, we pray that you would continue to give the fortitude of faith that she would need to continue to fight the good fight. Father, thank you even now for all that you've entrusted to her. And may she steward the assignment well to bring glory to your name, but also to bring coming good to humanity. Father, we pray that you would continue to sustain her Continue to give her the stamina she needs to run the race that has been assigned. We give your name praise and we give your name glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray in. And all those that agree said, amen. Come on, let's again give God praise. Again, stay mindful that um, early voting for Georgia primary elections, of course, will begin on Monday, April the 29th. Uh, that is the day after my birthday. We'll talk about that in a brief moment. <laughs> Election, of course, being that of uh, Tuesday, uh, May uh, the 21st. And of course, we would encourage you to make sure and stay mindful that the voter registration deadline uh, is tomorrow, April uh, the 22nd. And uh, we're excited, of course, about the opportunity that is ours to make our voices heard. Again, as stated, my birthday is on April the 28th, that's next Sunday, and I won't be here. 
Uh, but you're going to still observe it. But we're going to also have another day that Sunday afterwards. I'm going to be here. <laughs> That's a shameless plug, isn't it? <laughs> shameless. And, and so uh, actually on the 28th, I uh, accepted an invitation to go preach my pastor, uh, Bishop uh, Joseph Walker. And I didn't know it's my birthday. You know, my staff just got excited that he would invite me, which he does every year. And I said yes, but we didn't recognize it fell on my birthday. So I'm going to stay true to my word and go and preach. Plus, I love Nashville. And so I'm going to Nashville, and I pray I don't see any of you all in the city. <laughs> and I'm going to go preach on that Sunday, but I'm going to party like a rock star. Yes, I am. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Chill out Saturday so I can be ready for Sunday. But again, I appreciate you all so much. Also, today is a very exciting Sunday as we will share in the baptism experience of seven individuals who have accepted Christ as Lord and as Savior. That's right. Come on. Let's give God praise. Seven individuals. That's the highlight of the day's worship service. Seven souls saved. Seven souls have come to know Christ as Lord and as Savior. And the Bible declares that if one soul repents, all the angels in heaven begins to rejoice. And it stands to reason that if there's rejoicing in heaven, there ought to be some rejoicing here on earth. Let thy will be done even on earth as it is in heaven. So I want us to fill this place with so much praise, with so much excitement as they will go down into the water and as they will come out of the water. I want us to fill this place with so much excitement that they can hear us on I-20 and 285. Let's give God praise and let's give God glory even on today. Come on, EBC. Let's give God praise. Let's give God glory. Upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Come on, EBC. Step into the joy of the Lord. Step into the joy of the Lord. Step into the joy of the Lord. Upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Step into the joy of the Lord. Step into the joy of the Lord. Come on, ABC. Upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Woo! Step into the joy of the Lord. 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 Upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Woo! Step into the joy of the Lord. 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 Upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Woo! Step into the joy of Into the joy of the Lord. Step into the joy of the Lord. Woo! <laughs> Upon the perfection of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Woo! Set Come on, EBC, give God praise and give God glory in this place. Oh, come on, you can do better than this that. This is the freedom of the Lord. Say, this is the freedom of the Lord. This is the freedom of the Lord. This is the joy that I've been waiting for. This is the joy of the Lord. This is the joy. To God be all praise and to God be all of the glory. Well, ABC, you can go ahead and claim your seats at this time if you're able to do so. And we're preparing to worship God by way of giving. What a joy it is to give. What an honor it is to give. 
What a blessing it is to give. And we give today as an act of worship. We give as an act of faith. We give as an act of Christian stewardship. We give today as an act of obedience even unto our God. And we thank God for the joy and privilege that is ours even as we prepare to give on today. Thank you, EBC, for how you give so liberally and how you give so generously and how you sow into the vision and the mission that God has given unto our church. And as a result of your faithfulness, our church is able to make an impact locally and even beyond that uh, in this region and in this state and even throughout the world as we have engaged in different mission and ministry endeavors around the globe. And it's because of your benevolence. It's because you have adhered to the core value of our church of spontaneous generosity as we understand that compassion requires action. And with that being said, of course, you know there's an array of different platforms wherein you're able to give. And we ask that you will identify a platform that would serve uh, you today. And as you give, of course, today, recognize that you are sowing into good, fertile ground. To those who desire to give by way of the envelope system, at the end of the day's worship service, our doorkeepers will be standing at the various doors, and you can deposit your gifts within the receptacles, and they will see to it that they are turned in. Let's bow in the word of prayer. Father, how we honor you and how we thank you and how we praise you for the blessed privilege that is ours as we prepare now to sow, as we prepare now to give. Sanctify our seeds and multiply our seeds, and may our seeds be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and the advancing of your cause. We give your name praise, and we give your name glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray in, and all those that agree with this prayer in one united voice said, Amen. Of course, many of you are aware on yesterday we celebrated the homegoing uh, celebration of our very own Deacon uh, Joseph Hambright. And uh, it was a grand time of celebration as, of course, uh, we yet and still collectively grieve uh, as a result of his transition. I uh, applaud and appreciate so much our deacons for the masterful job in which they uh, helped to honor his life and celebrate him as he served as one of our faithful deacons here at our church uh, for a long period of time. And we also ask that you continue to pray for our mothers, of course, as he provided leadership and support to our mother's ministry, and many of them are yet and still grieving, so let's keep them lifted in prayer. And uh, as a result of such, it's just been a challenging past couple of weeks. I had, of course, my grandmother's home going celebration and Deacon, of course, Joseph Hambright. And last week I was in revival in Augusta and just been ripping and running. And so I woke up this morning and decided I wasn't preaching. I made that decision for myself. I said, I'm taking off today. And so just going to take a brief moment. And I asked uh, Reverend Terrence Albritton to preach for today. And he's going to share with us. And uh, Reverend Tim Sims is going to preach at the sea service. And though I'm not preaching here today, I have to go down to Montezuma, that place down south Georgia. <laughs> I have to preach at 5 o'clock for a young pastor who's been installed. And that, I wish I was able to get out of that, but, you know, I gave him a word. <laughs> and I can get out of this. You know, I got a little bit more clout here at EBC. I just can't tell the people I'm not coming at 5, so I'm going to go there at 5. Reverend Albritton did a masterful job at the A service. And I promise you, the word that God is going to share with us today is going to be a word that would encourage you. Let's warmly welcome again Reverend Terrence Albritton as he would come to share with us the word of God on today. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in honor of the best bishop this side of heaven. Bishop Dr. Craig L. Oliver. If you would, join me in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 2. And as the tradition of our church, if you don't mind standing as we read God's word, Exodus chapter 2, if you got it, say, I got it. If you don't, say, wait a minute. Praise God for the table of contents. If you see red writing or maps, you've gone too far. For the sake of brevity, allow me to read out loud while you follow along, starting at verse 1, and it reads, And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and with pitch 
and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away, nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it, and the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. He became her son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Let us pray. Father, we come. Lord, thanking you for this place called Sanctuary. Lord, use me beyond myself. Speak, prepare the soil of their heart to receive the seed of your word. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God say amen. amen. You may take your seats. Today I'll be teaching with this thought in mind, how God intervenes. <laughs> While our attention is often directed toward Moses when examining this chapter, I invite us to shift our perspective today and contemplate through the eyes of Jochebed, Moses' mother, but simultaneously through the lens of God's viewpoint. As we direct our attention towards Jochebed, we witness a mother faced with one of the most challenging decisions a mother can confront, the act of letting her child go. Often, circumstances demand such decisions. Even though these decisions are inherently difficult, Recognizing the right time to release your child is never an easy task. And as a mother, it fills you with apprehension. After nurturing a child within you for nine months, experiencing every kick and movement, how does one simply let go? How do you actually do it? At what age do you do it? Well, that's what we see here in this text. We see a mother that lets go and watches how God intervenes. We're all familiar with this chapter. The theme of this chapter is divine providence and deliverance. In this chapter, we are presented with a profound portrayal of how God's unwavering care and intervention played a pivotal role and safeguarding and ultimately delivering Moses who would go on to lead the Israelites. It serves as a remarkable illustration of God's unfolding plan and his steadfast devotion to his chosen people. But if you're going to understand how God intervene, intervenes, you got to understand faith's requirement. Faith requires me. Verse 1 through 3 reads, And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. When the woman conceived and bare a son, she saw him and that he was a goodly child. She hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she built the ark and sent him down the river. The story doesn't directly say that Moses was Jacob's eldest son. 
However, we can gather from the text that Moses' sister, who is clearly older, is mentioned here. Moreover, it's also mentioned that Aaron, who is his Moses' brother, is three years older than he is. It is crucial to bear in mind that Pharaoh had decreed that all newborn infant Hebrew children be thrown into the Nile River. Try to imagine the overwhelming fear and anxiety that must have engulfed this mother. She lived in constant dread of her child being discovered, probably already witnessing others' mothers having their children thrown into the river. Eventually, when she could no longer conceal him, she resorted to placing him into a small ark made by hand and sending him down the very river that was supposed to seal his fate at birth. What a display of faith. See, this is the point where her faith led her decisions. We can all agree that entrusting a three-month-old baby to a basket and sending it down a river all while believing he would be safe demands an immense amount of faith. Listen, many of us had a hard time dropping our children off at college. <laughs> Imagine placing your three-month-old in a basket and pushing it down a river. One thing to know about faith, when we display faith, it can open the door for God to intervene. Let me ask you a question. What is it in your life right now that you may have given birth to that you're scared to let go of? Is it a child, a business, a ministry, a marriage, a relationship? What are you holding on too tight to? Understand there are benefits in letting go. The first thing you get is freedom because you realize it's no longer in your hands. But then you get trust and surrender. You learn to let go and let God then you get a sense of inner peace. And the last thing I want to point out that you get is alignment with God. You're only giving back to God what he gave you so he can do more with it before he gives it back to you. Okay, you didn't catch that point. So I shared the last service one Christmas. I had gave my son Carrington a toy and he opened it and he was playing with it. And then my wife had to remind me that I didn't put the batteries in it. So I'm sitting there trying to take a toy from him to put batteries in it that he's playing with. So he did like most children, didn't want to give it to me, was crying. But what he didn't understand that I did not want him to let it go to take it from him. I wanted him to let it go so I could do something with it so when I gave it back to him, it would be better than what he had in the beginning. See, you're holding on to what God gave you thinking that somebody is trying to take it from you. God says, no, can you trust me enough to give back to me what I've given to you to watch what I can do with it? See, intuitively, we understand this principle when it comes to tithing. We understand that God is the God of resources, so we tithe every week, every pay period, because we understand that when we give back to God a portion of what he's given to us, that he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing where we won't have room enough to receive it. But why do we stop believing that we're tithing? What do you have in your hands that you're refusing to let go of? to allow God to be able to do more with it than what you can. One of the things you need to gain from this message is that your faith makes room for God's resources. Then your faith allows 
for the father's resourcefulness. Verse 4 says, And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him, and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. Imagine Moses' mother struggling to put the infant in the basket, but not knowing that her daughter is watching all alone. Here come Pharaoh's daughter walking to go bathe, go bathe. And her maids are with her and they discover the baby. See, this is how we know God is resourceful. We see that he's omniscient, all-knowing. We see that he's omnipotent, all-powerful. He can and will provide all that is needed when it is needed. He is resourceful, how? Through his provision. God is the ultimate provider. Meeting the needs of individuals and the world as a whole. God can meet your needs and then not take away anything that I need in my life. So I don't have to covet what he's doing in your life because what he's doing in your life has no bearing on what he can do with mine. But he is resourceful through wisdom. God is the source of all wisdom and understanding. Maybe you won't let it go because you think you can come up with the idea that's going to solve your problem. Not realizing that God is the source of all wisdom. But he's resourceful through creativity. He created this universe. It's a showcase of his divine creativity. And he can endow us with that same level of creativity because he instructed Jacobed how to build this ark where it can float down the river and her son be safe. But he's resourceful through miracles. It was not a coincidence that Jacobed sent Moses down the river at the exact time Pharaoh's daughter was getting ready to take a bath. That's what we call God's divine timing. See, you have to expect miracles to happen. You got to live your life like you know God is going to show up. You might not know how, you might not know when, but you are content that God is going to show up. I don't care how much you pace at night, how much you worry about it. You got to have faith that miracles still happen. I said last hour, if the Bible says God never sleeps or slumber, why are you staying up all night worrying? I figure we both going to have to be up. I'm going to go to sleep. When I say the Father's resourcefulness, I mean God can provide, guide, and intervene in ways that surpass human understanding. How would Israel have known that manna would produce on the ground in the middle of a desert? Or that he would give them water out of a rock in the middle of a desert? Or that he would part the Red Sea? Or the healing of Naaman by washing in the Jordan? Or Elijah and the widow when she had a little oil and flour that God can multiply it. God can and will provide for you in miraculous ways. But then you got to look at the father's romance. Verse 6 says, and when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Why is that important? Because Pharaoh had already decreed that all male Hebrew children were to be drowned in the river. It was unheard of for a member of the Egyptian royal family to adopt someone from a lower class, let alone a slave. This could only be done by the guidance of a compassionate God. This is a clear example of the Father's love, the romance he has for us because of our relationship with him. It is also a clear example of God's providence at work. 
See, this is why living by faith is crucial. See, our perception is limited to our own perspectives. Yet when God gazes upon us, he can perceive our entire life encompassing every moment. He sees the end from the beginning and everything in between. To further clarify this, we all know scripture says that one day for God is equivalent to a thousand years for us. So taking this step, this analogy a step further, we can deduce that one hour for God would be approximately 41.67 years for humans. This breakdown highlights the vast difference in the perception of time between God and us. So what we feel is a long time really isn't. It's just a matter of seconds for God. Okay, look at it this way. One second for God, one second is equivalent to 11 days for us. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. That is one year of your life in God's time. So tell me again, why are you complaining about how long it's taken? One year is 30 seconds for God. Okay, so you've been dealing with it three, four years. That's not even five minutes. Now, I thought we said in church that it's all about God's time, not mine. I thought we say, God, have your way. It's all about whose time you're viewing it from. The Bible says in the fullness of time, Christ came. And that's the same way he works in your life. In the fullness of time, what he has ordained for you will come to pass so you can think you've been struggling for a long time for God nine years nine years of your life is only five minutes for God we are on his schedule not ours but my next point is the father's remarkability here's what's interesting then said his sister his who? To Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go to call, to, thee a, to call thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid, who? But I thought it was his sister. Did you see God's providence? His sister was a maid. Of Pharaoh's daughter who was watching her brother float down a river and retrieved the basket and brought it to her and suggested to her that we call a Hebrew woman to nurse the child she went and got her mother and Pharaoh's sister said I'm going to pay you to raise your own child so you can bring it back to me. God is truly remarkable. But you know what? None of that would have happened 
if she hadn't uh, let go. So I asked again, what are you holding on to? What are you afraid to let go of? Moses' sister, who we later learned is named Miriam, talked to Pharaoh's daughter when she found baby Moses in the river. And she had the smart idea that Pharaoh's daughter could have a Hebrew woman take care of the baby. And she brought it to her mother. And her mother ended up being paid to raise her own child. So mothers, rest assured that God is fully aware of every challenge you face. He does not show favoritism. What he's done for somebody else, he can do for you. How he moved in Jacobet's life to save her son, he can do the same for you and your children. By maintaining your faith, you open the door for God to manifest his work in your life. Because of God's plans for Moses' life, God already had it planned that he would be raised in the Egyptian household by royalty. What do I mean? We see what Moses ended up doing, leading over a million people. So Moses had to be taught how to lead. So Moses couldn't have been raised with the mentality of a slave. He was raised in a house, in an environment that taught him how to lead. That God later used to lead his people. But none of that would have happened for Moses had his mother not why are you holding that child back from what God is trying to do in their life God can't do what he's doing in their life because you too busy trying to take the control God is saying let go let go and let God. Years ago, I never forget taking my daughter to dinner because she was dealing with some challenges. And I said, "You know, as your father, it's hard to watch you struggle when I know I can pull you out. But I realize some of what you're going through is God doing something in your life." And I said, "I don't want my brook to dry up." for God to make me, to prevent me from messing up what he's doing in your life. And so as your father, I struggle with knowing when to let you stew in it and to pull you out. But I realize this is something God is doing. And so I got to it's not easy. But God says when, when you let go, you're not leaving them to some faithless eternity he says you're, you're letting them go into my hands he says I'm not going to take it from you but if you lay it down his burden is easy his yoke is light so if it's heavy Whose burden you carry? Because if he says easy, but you saying it's hard, then either you or God owe me an explanation. <laughs> if the yoke is heavy, he says his is light. Well, maybe the day you change yours in for his so you can walk out a little lighter. Let go and let God. Let us reflect on the profound understanding of God who sees the entirety of our existence from its very beginning to its ultimate end and comprehends every intricate detail of our lives. 
There is no complexity too great for God to grasp, no challenge too daunting for him to overcome. As we journey under his guidance, let us release our anxieties over every outcome and resist the temptation of control. Remember, it is God who crafted both you and this universe and everything around us. Therefore, you can place your complete trust in his divine direction knowing that his counsel is unwavering and absolute. If God leads you to go, to let go of something, rest assured it's for a purpose beyond your understanding. Sometimes holding on does more damage than letting it go. You can let go and Trust God to give you the best possible outcome. So I asked again, what are you holding on to? Why are you holding on to it? Is it because you afraid that somebody is trying to take it? God says, if you knew what I can do with it, if you trust me with it, I wouldn't have to convince you to let it go. If you understood the faith of Moses' mother, all you got to do is look at the life of Moses and everything that God was able to do with him and through him None of it would have happened if his mother wouldn't have let go. Letting go requires faith. It is not easy. It can be one of the most difficult decisions in your life. But tell me this. If holding on to it was the best thing for you why are you still in this situation <laughs> if you trust that God gave it to you then release it back to him your life your job your talent your possessions, your marriage, your child. Give it back to God and watch what he can do with it. Everyone in here, close your eyes. Bow your head. Right now, it's just you and God. What is it that he's revealing to you right now that you need to let go of? What is it? Why are you holding on so tight? He's saying, trust me with it. Watch what I can do with it. Holding on is doing more damage than letting go ever will. Today, right now, lay it at his feet and pick it up no more. Allow God to do with it what you've proven you can't do on your own. And I promise you, you will lose nothing. You will lose nothing. Father, I pray for everyone in here even now. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Help them understand 
that letting go is how you begin to intervene. That we are letting go and trusting it into your hands. Knowing that you can do what we can't do on our own. So when you bring it back to us, it'll be better than it was when we let it go. Give us the freedom that comes with letting go. Give us the spiritual alignment that comes with letting go. And Father, as I look around this sanctuary, at the tears. Father, help them understand that you can interpret every tear. You know exactly what they're dealing with. That everyone here is not here on accident. They are here by divine providence. Because you are speaking to their heart that you've been waiting on them to trust you with it. So Father, we praise you in advance for the testimonies that's going to begin right now, for the lives that you're going to change, for the faith they're going to show. You are a God that does not fail. So the day we vow we're going to let go and we're going to let God. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. And the people of God say amen, amen, amen. Everyone stand to your feet if you're able. Listen. If God is going to intervene in your life, you first have to have a relationship with him. He sent his son and his death was a propitiation for your sin and his cross is really a bridge that got you back to God because of the fellowship that sin broke. But today you can make a decision to restore that relationship. So why don't you come down and give one of them your hand but ultimately give God your heart. Maybe you're here and you're saved but you don't have a church home. Why don't today you, you make the decision to come under the watch of a person you can call pastor amongst the people you can call family. You're holding on to your own life. How about today you release it in God's hands? So as the praise team shall sing, would you come? Let go and let God. Would you make a decision Worrying today? Worrying how the story ends When I let go and I let God Let God have his way He's not going to take it from you. You got to lay it down. Will you make a decision on today? Come. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's encourage. Let's encourage. Come on. This is your moment to let go. This is your moment to let go. Let go and let go. Watch what God do when you let go. Come on, we still got time. We still got time. Make your decision today. Let go. And let God. And let God. Let go. And let God. Why don't you let go? And let God. Oh, let go. And let God. Let go. And let God have his.
Come on, you see, let's give God praise and glory in this place. Uh, come on, you can do better than that. How excited we are over the decision that each of you have made on today. We're excited that you have decided to put today's message into practice. You're standing here right now. Demonstrates your willingness to let go and to let God. And we celebrate with each and every one of you over the decision that you've made even on today. I'm excited on a personal note to serve as your pastor, to serve as your friend. I speak on behalf of all of your kin folks who are standing with you. We say welcome home. We're excited to have you. I say this often, but I say it sincerely that our church is better because you are a part of it. You come with skills and talents and you come with stories and experiences that God can use to help take this ministry to a whole nother level. I encourage you to get plugged in. In a brief moment, you're gonna go with our decision counselors. They're gonna give you some guidance. They're gonna pray with you and share with you how you can get plugged in. And also you have the opportunity, check that out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's your little son. That's it. Yeah, he came and brought that purse. I know that's right. Everybody in church ain't saved. That's right. Look out for mama. But as I was saying, in a few weeks from hence, we're going to meet and have a more um, intimate time of sharing where you can get to know me and later Oliver will be a part of that meeting as well. And I'm looking forward to it. Again, we say welcome home and we're excited to have you. As you'll join Sister King at this time, give them a wonderful hand. Can you help me to appreciate Reverend Terrence Algren? Wow. Come on, let's give him another wonderful hand, another wonderful hand. Tremendous job, tremendous job. Tremendous job. In the words of Mark, aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Let me not start you, Mark. We good. I got it. <laughs> That's my friend of many years. Love, old Mark. Listen, Terrence, outstanding job. Appreciate you so much. Really needed that word. Really needed that word. I was sharing at the A service, and I feel led to even do it again uh, during this particular service. Uh, Terrence uh, started a company some years ago, uh, Grady Baby, and it's doing a tremendous job. And I just want him to just share a couple of things. Uh, talk to us again real quickly about... Uh, your business so me and my family five years ago we started a clothing company called Grady Baby Company in Apparel and I applied for the trademark five years ago for the phrase Grady Baby and if you anything about Atlanta you understand it and I won a trademark and two years ago uh, Grady Hospital decided to sue us for the ownership of the name and you know, we did it the right way. We applied for it, we went through the trademark process, and we were awarded a trademark, so we legally own it. But right now, we're fighting with them in federal court because they want us to turn over the name to them, kids, without compensation. And so if you don't know anything about the legal process, you know litigation is expensive, and we are a family of five fighting against a billion dollar institution. And so we have a petition that we would love for you to sign. We have a GoFundMe where we're raising funds to offset legal expenses. Um, but we're in a fight, but I feel like David and, right. and Goliath and, you know, this, this message came to me one night when I'm trying to figure out, like, Lord, what do I do? Do I give up? Do we give in? And he led me to this passage and told me that I need you to do what Jacobet did, and that is let go. And that's what, that's what we're doing. So tell us again, Terrence, uh, where can they go and sign the petition? And so you can sign the petition on our Instagram at Grady Baby Co. Um, or at I Am All Britain on the screen. We have a link in the bio where you'll find the petition you can sign in to go find me and other ways that you can help support us. Yeah, that's right. So EBC, let's support our very own. Let's support our very own. I would encourage you to go uh, to those designated locations and let's fill out the petition and let's support our very own. Again, Terrence, thank you so much. Job well done. Appreciate you. Well, let's depart from this place. And again, I pray and trust that you will have an incredible balance of this day, this Sunday. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May he bless your down city and your uprising. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Amen. Amen.